now has a name. I have finally settled on a name for the fat boy. Alright guys, welcome back to T-Bone Southern Ride. As we're going down the road at half the speed we need. Uh, of course you saw the header, you know why you're here. And the fat boy has a name now. Uh, I decided not to go with the revenge theme. Uh, from here on out this bike will be known as Big Papa. And the story behind that goes, yesterday, uh, of course you guys see the debut of the Blue Moon, the 97 Super Glide. Uh, yesterday, I had the Super Glide out, cleaning it up, and I fired off the Fat Boy and turned around and R1 was coming out of the house, which she's with me today. She's on back there riding. She wanted to get a ride in this evening. <coughs> so, this will now be known as Big Papa. So, we got Big Papa and T-Bone's Blue Moon. So, I guess we're pretty well set. But anyway, guys, welcome to the first episode of our Halloween review for the month of October. We're going to be doing horror movies for the month of October. And this is R1's request. She had several, and I'll probably get to all of them. But uh, she had the request that I should start it with two of my absolute favorite old school genre horror movies. And today, today I'm going to be telling you about the original 1977 Hills Have Eyes. Now, the, the original, like I said, it was made in 1977, the year I was born. And uh, it is a Wes Craven film. Now, these, these films came out, kind of kind of give Wes Craven his foothold in the horror world with The Hills Have Eyes way before Nightmare on M Street ever came along. But The Hills Have Eyes, guys, I can remember my cousin Margie, originally she had the original Hills Have Eyes and Hills Have Eyes Part 2, which was called The Hills Still Have Eyes. Uh, she had them on VHS and we watched them in my Uncle Jay and Aunt Cat's house and man, I love those movies. Uh, in the genre of horror, they are horror movies, but I would consider them more to be psychological thrillers. Uh, if you've never seen them, uh, I definitely, you know, for October, Halloween, I definitely say give these movies a look. Because to me, they're just great movies. They, they are fun movies to watch. You know, if you've never seen them before, they'll keep you guessing. And... Now, I have watched the remakes. Uh, they did remake the uh, Hills Have Eyes in the 2000s. Uh, I watched them, and those were... They tried to run in line with the original storylines, but these were just... The remakes were a little bit more brutal. You know, they didn't leave a, not, a lot to the imagination, and they kind of... I don't know they just I'm not gonna say they were done in poor taste cuz I thought they were okay but they weren't Wes Craven's originals now the original starred a guy named Michael Barrymore I'm gonna try to be able to get Michael's picture and pop it up on the video here so you can see who I'm talking about to me he was the standout actor in these movies <coughs> now Guys, y'all have to forgive me. This ragweed, I'm telling you, I don't know if anybody else is suffering from sinuses right here at the <coughs> at the end of September, 1st of October, but man, they're, they're driving me crazy. But anyway, Michael Berryman uh, starred as uh, Pluto in these movies. And of course, I have the originals on DVD. Love them. I still watch them regularly. 
And that's what R1 said. She said that you've watched these movies so many times, so it's got to be the one you start with. So, uh, <clears throat> Michael was the guy who stood out because Pluto, you know, Michael Berryman was just such a unique looking guy anyway, uh, a unique voice. But I tell you, I saw him in a ton of movies. And every movie he's ever been in, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed his acting. Uh, you know, just, he's just one of those standout guys. I mean, but uh, the Hills Have Eyes guys, I'll give you the layout of the movies, uh, part one and part two, because like I said uh, in the Blue Moon video, I want to, I don't want to just pick one movie apart. I want to kind of just, you know, talk about the whole franchise, kind of like I did with the uh, the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies that I did for T-Bone Cinder Moments and I might try to recap that for the Southern Ride. We'll wait and see because I've got a lot of movies and I want you guys to drop down a comment and give me your suggestions. What's your favorite horror movie? If I haven't seen it, I'll try to find it and watch it and give a review on it. Give my thoughts on it. Which, you know, my thoughts don't mean much. Opinions are like buttholes. Everybody's got one. But, uh, essentially, this is just a suburban family who are going through the Nevada desert uh, in a station wagon pulling a camper behind them. You got a man, his wife, and their three kids. The oldest daughter married and she has a baby. Uh, so you end up with these characters stopping at a little gas station just out of nowhere on their way to California, getting fuel and looking at a map and decided that they're going to cut some time off of their trip and they're going to cut across the desert and go through this military testing range and not long after they get on that road uh, they start realizing that the Air Force is flying around them doing maneuvers and test runs and then all of a sudden they end up with four flat tires wrecked and now they're stuck <clears throat> but uh you know you then you introduce the family they're introduced in the original they're just introduced as a family of cannibals there was a little bit of backstory in the original movie part one which is kind of different from where the remake came in because the remake Guys, if you're on a motorcycle and you're coming out near Highway 2, be careful. There is loose gravel everywhere out here. But, uh, they give a little bit more of a backstory that there was a nuclear bomb tested in the desert and the Jupiter family, which is the name in the original as well, uh, they were kind of forgotten out there in the desert after the testing and they kind of mutated and inbred and you know all the fun things that make for a good thriller or a good horror movie but the Jupiter family you had Papa Jupe and the mama and the uh, they had a daughter and I can't uh, Ruby was the daughter's name uh, but Ruby was a little bit different than the rest of the, the family she wasn't like a deranged killer uh, she actually ends up saving the baby of the uh, suburban family but they uh, uh, Pluto and then you got Mars and uh, a big network I mean they they've got this uh, they've got this desert down to a, a science they know where everything is sorry about that guys they were doing some tree trimming on the side of the road there but anyway uh, the Jupiter family of course you had all those characters now in the original like I said in part one they were in the desert and they had the desert they knew the desert so uh, and then uh, there's a couple of good characters and dogs uh, they had a couple of nice German Shepherds and the German Shepherds ended up one of them ended up getting killed in the first movie the other one made it to the second one Thor I think was the dog's name and he actually ends up playing a intricate part in both movies 
but uh, you know what a good psychological thriller guys it uh, yeah I, I love the original one I, I love part one the original one because you end up with Papa Jupe and the entire family essentially or you think the entire family has been killed but uh, in the end the young boy from the family that were wrecked him and his sister survive his younger sister uh, the older sister, I believe, gets killed, and the husband, he, he don't get killed, but he gets beat up pretty bad. But anyway, uh, and then you go fast forward a couple, two or three years, and then the hills still have eyes. Now, part two focuses on Ruby, the daughter of the cannibals, and the boy, the son from the uh, suburban family. They have... Uh, They have a motocross business. So that's one click for them right there is they're into motorcycles, but they're racing Moto X and they have a new super fuel that they're heading to a desert test range to test the fuel and race the bikes and try to get a big promotion and sell a lot of barrels of uh, fuel. But anyway, they end up Essentially, back in the same desert, Ruby ends up going. The brother doesn't go because he's just so psychologically messed up from the happenings from the first movie that he just can't mentally bring himself to go back to the desert to test his fuel. But great characters in part two, uh, the hills still have eyes. They have great characters that are in a bus carrying their dirt bikes and their super fuel. Of course, they end up out of gas in the desert. They run out of gas because of a road, a uh, torn gas line. And uh, you find out just in a little bit that there's not a whole family this time. It's, it's essentially just two guys this time. Pluto returns, and then you have uh, uh, a new character entered that you're introduced to, and that's the Reaper, uh, who is Papa Jupe's brother. So... Pluto and uh, Pluto and Reaper end up, you know, they, they make a pretty formidable set of bad guys. You know, just those two by themselves not having Papa Jupe and the rest of the family. But uh, you end up at some point in the movie where Pluto and Ruby get together, which Ruby's going by a different name now. She has a different identity. But, of course, Pluto knows who she is immediately. And then he starts trying to play the mind game for Ruby that Reaper was going to get her and, you know, just a lot of menacing stuff that you would take away from the movie. And, you know, if you have a weak constitution, you're going to have nightmares off of it. But uh, part two was a great movie. I, I think part two, and a lot of times sequels are part two to movies. They don't turn out to be as good as the first one, but I think The Hills Still Have Eyes is just as good, and at some points it's better than the original one. Because the original one in the beginning, the first little bit of that movie, you've got to just kind of hold on and let it get to where they get out into the desert because <clears throat> there's a few scares and a few psychological moments, but it really doesn't pick up until it gets like later in the day and you know uh, the dad and the uh, brother-in-law son-in-laws kind of take off to see if they can find help that but uh you do a lot of flashing back in part two which you know there was a few years difference in between one and two but i you know I, again i think part two is just as good as part one but uh, you end up with Reaper kind of being, uh, he's not as commanding as Papa Jupe. Of course, Papa Jupe had a whole family, and Reaper is just essentially, he came to the desert from some other desert, and I'm assuming since he came there and it was just him and Pluto, that uh, he didn't have a family to bring with him. So, uh, uh, <clears throat> he was a little bit, he was a good antagonist, 
but again I have to give Pluto Michael Berryman's character I have to give him the props for kind of carrying the scenes uh, you know he ends up going to war with the dog again uh, ends up going to war with Ruby and I'll tell you guys in the second one Michael Berryman took a beating in the first one he took a pretty good pretty good pounding in the first movie but man in that second movie he took a beating uh, he, he was bit by the dog drug around by the dog <laughs> drug with the motorcycle uh, he, he took a pretty good beating but you know it ends up uh, it ends up going a little deeper Uh, there's a there's a character that and I can't remember her name but she's a blind girl and she done a really good job I will try to look up her name before I post this video and see if I can't post her name and you know her credits in the movie she uh, she did a great job in the movie acting but there it is guys uh, the hills have eyes original 1977 and the hills still have eyes the original sequel part two to the original one uh if you haven't never seen them i i strongly suggest that you give them a watch i think you'll enjoy them uh if you saw the remakes and you've never saw the original ones and you kind of walked away from the remakes with a bad taste in your mouth uh go back and give the original ones another chance give them a look because they're, they're really good movies. I really do. They are at the top of my horror list. Uh, and of course, any of the movies that I, that I talked to you about this month, guys, is dealing with the horror and Halloween subject, are going to be movies that I pretty well much know them, watched them a ton, like the uh, Friday the 13th series. Uh, I've got all those movies on DVD and I've watched them repeatedly Nightmare on M Street big fan Freddy Krueger uh, pl I played Freddy Krueger in uh, the uh, haunted house when I was on the fire department I played Freddy Krueger for several consecutive years uh, and loved it loved the character I was actually playing the character while there were still movies coming out in the franchise so you know I would kind of see what Freddy was doing new in the movies each year and I would kind of incorporate it into me bringing him to life in the haunted house but I tell you guys Wes Craven uh, Wes Craven is one of those creators of course like I say the hills have eyes and the hills still have eyes are his franchise uh, you know bringing us nightmare on M Street the hills have eyes and then uh, one of the better ones I thought he did in the uh, late 90s was uh, Wes Craven's New Nightmare. I actually enjoyed Wes Craven's New Nightmare. It had deviated from the original plot, but you, you know, he brought in Heather Langenkamp who played Nancy in the original Nightmare on M Street. But those are for another day. I wanted to I wanted to kick this uh, Halloween stuff off the, with uh, the Hills Have Eyes. And I'm going to try to set it up, guys. I've just got a lot of stuff going on right now. But I still want to try to set it up to where maybe I can visit a couple of haunted spots in our area and <clears throat> do an episode of T-Bone Southern Ride for that. But, again, drop down in the comments. Give me your movie recommendations. Give me a location, guys. Where do you think I should go visit? And uh, at some point, if you make a recommendation and I decide that I want to go check it out, you can go with me and I will feature you in an episode of T-Bone Southern Ride. Uh, and one more thing before we end. If you made it this far, guys, hit the like button. Let me know you made it all the way to this point of the video. But I want to get you guys involved. Uh, this is kind of going to be off the subject of... Halloween, but I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. Uh, the Blue Moon, uh, I want you guys to be a part of it with me. Changing out parts and kind of getting it to, you know, kind of getting it to Southern Ride standards. 
if you have any parts out there for a Dyna Super Glide that you're not using or just hanging on the wall collecting dust, bars, CC bars, seats, pegs, uh, you know, that aren't just rusted up, beat up, but if you've got some Dyna parts that you're just wanting to get rid of because you don't ever use them, if you want to donate them to T-Bone Southern Ride for the Blue Moon Project, uh, guys, I'll give you full credit for it. That would be awesome. And, you know, who knows? You may send a part that makes that my motorcycle. It makes it, you know, makes it uh, Blue Moon worthy for T-Bone Southern Ride. But keep that in mind, guys. And uh, i tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here and finish up my ride with R1. Uh, so keep your eyes open guys for more horror videos horror reviews send in your recommendations don't forget about the Dyna parts if you're on Instagram follow us on Instagram don't forget to check us out on YouTube of course here on Facebook so guys until the next time I'm T-Bone and this has been the Southern Ride